I'll start with a signal chain that probably describes most systems these days. I've got a program source and a mixer, a signal processor, an amplifier, and a loudspeaker. Since the mixer is sort of the brain of the sound system, I'll start there. Traditionally, an analog mixer has a max output voltage of about 10 volts. That's usually found using a test tone, like a 1 kHz sine wave. Real-world audio signals have an average level along with signal peaks, and the 10 volts puts a limitation on the peaks. The average signal level might be about 10% of the max, in this case 1 volt, and that's 20 dB below the maximum output voltage. For this mixer to have maximum signal-to-noise ratio, we want the signal peaks to get close to that 10 volts, and that puts the average voltage at about 1 volt. And the mixer should have a meter on it that lets us know when we're there, in this case tracking the average voltage. Let's create an ideal system in which all of the components in the signal chain have the same maximum output voltage. And if operated with the same amount of peak room, each would have the same average output voltage. And by the way, we could have this same discussion using the max output or the average, so long as we're consistent through the system. So I hit play on the program source and it puts out 1 volt, which causes the mixer to put out 1 volt. The signal processor is operating in its default setting of unity, so it puts out 1 volt. The power amp produces 1 volt into the loudspeaker, and that just happens to be the perfect loudness for the listener out in the audience. This ideal system would not need its gain structure set. It's already got an ideal gain structure. So how would a real-world system be different than this one? Well, let's look at that step by step. If the program source is a microphone, it's not putting out anywhere near 1 volt. It may be just a few millivolts, so we need some gain at the input of the mixer to amplify the signal up closer to 1 volt, which, by the way, is called line level in audio. This preamplifier may be built into the mixer itself or it may be a standalone component. It could even be the input block of a digital signal processor. But you have to have some gain to get the mic level signal up to line level. Post mixer, the signal processor is usually operated at unity by default, which means that level wise, what's going in is what's coming out. So we really don't need a gain adjustment there, at least for now. Chances are that power amp is not going to be appropriate for this system, so let's substitute a larger one, a much larger one. And let's put a gain adjustment at the input of it to adjust the sound pressure level in the audience to whatever it is that we need. And this big amp should allow us to get there. That's it, so let's review. We have a program source that can be almost any level. There's an input gain stage for the mixer to bring that level up to line level. We stay at line level through the signal processing stages, where maybe some equalization and other signal processes are added. And then the amplifier supplies the appropriate amount of gain to reach the target sound pressure level in the audience. That's pretty much how all sound systems work, and you can substitute the components of your choice and apply this universal gain structure philosophy. Once the gain structure is established, the system is operated from the mixer, and the main fader on the mixer determines the output level of the system. Now, where can things go wrong? Well, given the input sensitivity of modern power amps, it's very likely that our gain control, which more correctly is called an input sensitivity control, is well below its maximum setting. And suppose that we began our gain structure by maxing out this control. I would then be forced to drop the mixer's level dramatically to avoid excess sound level in the audience. And this causes all kinds of gain structure problems. The meter on the mixer is not working. The fader is way down at the bottom of its range. The signal to noise ratio has been compromised. And the residual noise of the system is now audible in the audience. This is classic, lousy gain structure. The simple fix for this is to turn the power amp down and run the mixer back up where it needs to go. If you need to max out the power amp, and there can be several reasons for this, 
Use the output level control of the signal processor to reduce the signal level, and then you can max out the amp. Another solution is that some amplifiers have input stages that allow their sensitivity to be optimized for the drive signal. And this would allow you to max out the power amp with the mixer producing line level with its fader up in the optimal range of operation. You can see from this that if the amplifier sensitivity is too high, it kind of forces errors all the way back through the system to compensate. So work through the system from input to output, adjusting the level of each stage as you go, with the amplifiers adjusted last.